to the next presentation, uh, uh, optimizing outcomes in Fakey Kaiwal, uh, to be given by our very young and bright um, and very meritorious uh, uh, consultant at RP Center, Assistant Professor uh, Dr. Manpreet Kaur in Cornea Cataract and Refractive Surgery Services. Uh, and uh, to her credit, at this very young age, she has a large number of publications and awards and books. So over to you, Manpreet. Thank you so much, ma'am, for the kind words. Uh, I'll be speaking on optimizing outcomes with fake files. There are no relevant financial disclosures, and I thank AIS and Namrata ma'am for the opportunity. And so optimal outcomes, as we all know, depend on vaulting. It's the most important determinant of having good post-operative visual as well as anatomical outcome. So it depends on three, uh, there are three aspects, pre-operative assessment, which is important for proper sizing, Intraoperative optical coherence tomography guided surgery, which helps to assess vault on table and also on table decision making, and post operative assessment of the vault using slit lamp or anterior segment optical coherence tomography. So, the parameters that are important pre operatively are the wide to wide diameter and the aqueous depth from endothelium to anterior lens capsule, which are the most important to determine the fake chyle size. So, we have cutoffs based on the model you use. In addition, angle anatomy, open angles are required with aridocondrial angle aperture of at least 30 degree and an adequate endothelial cell count. So what we have observed is that optical coherence tomography is a useful tool for preoperative assessment in determining the sizing. So conventionally, white to white has been used to determine which size of fake chyle to implant. And now we are moving on to sulcus to sulcus diameter and angle to angle which is most accurate does remain to be seen even now. White to white has a poor correlation with the actual sulcus to sulcus diameter and results in oversizing and undersizing in quite a few cases. And sulcus to sulcus diameter has been shown to have high inter-observer variance. It needs a skilled operator because high frequency ultrasound biomicroscopy is used to determine and it has low repeatability. And in fact, image sel uh, selection, unclear visualization of the sulcus, irregularities in the sulcus, misdirection of scanning can all be potential sources of errors. Then we move on to the angle to angle distance, which is measured using optical coherence tomography. And what has been observed is that it has a significantly higher reproducibility than the white to white measurement and correlates with the post operative vault as well. So swept source optical coherence tomography is being used for determining ICL size based on the angle to angle uh, distance and automatic analysis is used to calculate the anterior segment parameters and distance between the scleral spurs and crystalline lens size has a significant correlation with vault. It gives a, Cassia gives a 360 degree reconstruction of the anterior segment and is a useful tool to determine ICL size. It's based on the swept source OCT principle. Coming to intraoperative uh, usage of optical coherence tomography, what we have observed is that IOCT is very useful in anterior segment surgeries. In fact, it enables real-time visualization of ocular structures, enhances our understanding of the intraop dynamics, and aids in decision-making during various anterior segment surgeries. In fake chyle surgeries, it helps in the assessment of vault, the orientation of the fake chyle, and the real-time surgical dynamics. As I said, vault is adequate, uh, adequate vault is the essential prerequisite for optimal outcomes and an ideal vault is roughly equivalent to the central corneal thickness. So what Zeng et al. observed was that in the large series of 616 eyes, 2.6% cases needed a fake chyle exchange. Of these, 50% had too low a vault and 50% had too high a vault. So all of the cases of exchange were related to inadequate vault. We performed the real-time assessment of intraoperative vaulting in implantable columnar lens and correlated it with the post-operative vaulting using intraop OCT. What we saw was that the intraop vault on table correlates well with the post-operative final vault. It's a potential tool for decision-making in extremes of vault and also helps observe real-time surgical dynamics in interaction between the instrument and the intraocular structures. So how do you measure the vault on table? We devised the scale to measure. And what uh, the principle is that the depth of acquisition of this OCT that was used rescan 700, the previous version, is 2000 micron. And the height of the 
screen is 265 millimeters, so that is equivalent to 2000 microns. So we came up with a conversion factor of 7.5, in which you multiply whatever you get in millimeter with 7.5, and you get the actual volt in microns on table. And this is one of the cases in which viscoelastic is being aspirated after uh, putting the ICL, and you can see assess the volt on table. And you have to, the central hole acts as a correlation, as a landmark that you are in the center measuring the central vault. And using this correlation only, I could assess that the vault on table was 383 microns, 85. Yeah, so now the newer version of Rescan 700 has an on screen scale of one millimeter or thousand microns. It has five boxes, each corresponds to 200 microns. So this can directly be used to assess the wall. Uh, you can measure this uh, small, one small box in my, uh, millimeters and it corresponds to 200 microns and use a unitary conversion system to get the on table wall. So what we observed was that 18.2% of cases required an ICL explant in our series for vault related complications. So this is a significant decrease compared to the study by Zeng et al in which 100% of the cases required a explant for vault related complications. So there is an enhanced safety with the newer models as well as newer investigative modalities, both preoperative and intraoperative. So what happens when you uh, when you insert a pachychyl in the reverse orientation? So this is one case in which implantable pachychyl contact lens or IPCL was inserted and it was inverse as you can see on the intraop OCT. So it helps in on-table detection. These lenses are more flexible than the uh, ICLs and sometimes it's difficult to assess the orientation in the absence of IOCT. And as you can see, there is a central contact. So a decision was uh, taken to explant the fakicyl on table. It was reloaded and then re-implanted in the correct orientation. Had we left it, we would have had a higher incidence of cataract and a secondary intervention would have required. IOCT helps us detect it on table and correct it without the requirement for a secondary intervention and minimizing maybe potentially more dangerous complications. So intraoperative OCT allows in vivo cross-sectional imaging of the anterior segment. There's a real-time dynamic visualization of the entire procedure from the initial incision to final wound rehydration. Relationship between the ICL and crystalline lens can be seen and inadvertent touch of instruments to the central optical zone of the ICL can be avoided. Limitation, as of now, the metallic instruments are not really compatible with the OCT uh, image capture and there is a shadowing effect and it's not possible to accurately assess the contact of ICL to the peripheral lens or peripheral iris while positioning the haptics beneath the iris. As you can see, when you're observing the dynamic maneuvers, and there is this shadowing caused due to the instrument. So even though there is an indentation in the center beneath the cannula, you cannot really see if the lens is touching the crystalline lens, the fakic lens is touching the crystalline lens or not, because there is a shadowing effect due to the metallic instrument. So this remains one of the fallacies. And again, uh, a lot of motion when it's there, it may be difficult to accurately assess. Coming to the post-operative complications, optical coherence tomography helps to assess incorrect orientation of the fake IL, and the complications can be prevented if you catch them in time, such as cataract, secondary glaucoma, corneal decompensation, anterior subcapsular cataract with a very shallow vault can be observed in this case, and it's an indication for extant and phaco emulsification in this case. Extremely high vault of 1.35 mm was observed in this case with angle closure glaucoma. So when you see a iridotrabicular contact on ASOCT or occludable angles with raised IOP, you can take a decision to exchange the fake aisle with one size smaller. So optimizing outcomes with fake aisles is determinant on the correct sizing. It is imperative to achieve an adequate vault. Intraop OCT and both even pre-op and post-op ASOCT help enhance the safety and predictability of surgical outcomes right from vault. The intra-op vault correlates well with the post-op vault. Decision-making, extremes of vault, you can take a decision to explant or rotate the fake aisle in non-toric cases. And in inverse fake aisle, on-table detection and management can be performed by uh, explanting it. And real-time fake aisle crystalline lens relation can be observed, and this can help prevent lens touch.
thank you so much i would like to acknowledge professor jeevan sethyal who's my mentor and guide and also thank aios and namrata ma'am for the platform thank you